So we thank you, Lord, for you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for this chapter that we'll be able to read and then study a later together. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ, the veiling of women. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying have his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For it is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For man is not of the woman, but woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a, man, a woman pray uncovered, unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her at, for a covering. But if a man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. And concerning the Lord's Supper. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest of you. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. 
Wherefore, brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry for one another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he that ye not come together unto condemnation. Mm-hmm. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for reading. You know, so many people misconstrued a lot of things in the word of God. And, you know, it goes back to the early church, some of the writings, and even with the communion, they went out of control with it and it turned it into feast. You can get all that when you're studying commentaries. But let's, let's go back into proper worship in the beginning here. So be ye followers of me, even also if I am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and you keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And, and what I always loved about the Apostle Paul and all the writings he did, he's always directing us in our hearts that what he's given us, he got from Jesus. He got it from Christ. It's, it's not his opinion. It's God's opinion. And when I was a baby Christian, Back in the day, you remember, I, I spent a year in the Word of God before I ever thought about deliverance or anything else, you know, I got saved, and then the next thing you knew, and in, in the fall, I think it was 86, I got into, uh, God took me another level into learning about the enemy, because I didn't understand it, and all my background in it was taught to me by God. I was fasting a few days a week, and I mean fasting. I was like a little kid. When Jesus said, when I was, uh, when I got saved and I started reading the Bible, I literally started reading the early church fathers. I I got hooked up with the homeless. My friend from when I was a a kid, I used to go to the coffee shop because Pastor Gary used to get the kids off the street. So we'd learn about God a little, and he was a Lutheran pastor. So I got grace put into me when I was 13 years old, even though my family was Roman Catholic. So when I was in his library all the time, I would read some of the the books on the early church fathers, uh, Luther, and all that stuff. And I found myself, because he was a godly man, and he had a family, and, you know, it wasn't like the Catholic priest, I was trying to learn, wow, this guy's married and he's got children. And I knew him before he got married. And he was a good looking guy and all the ladies wanted to date him and everything else. And that was a whole, you know, priest in the Catholic church don't date the the congregation. It was a whole new life for me at 13 years old. And fast forward ahead, 19 years later, because he was my friend when I was a kid, I came under some of his tutelage. And he even rebuked me for praying in tongues out loud with a lot of people. And he sat me down in the parsonage and he says, hey, if you're going to speak in tongues in a congregation, you have to have interpretation. This is the word of God. You're going to hear that when we get to it in Corinthians. You know, the gifts of the spirit. The Pentecostals are a little bit of craziness sometimes because, you know, you're either going to listen to the word of God or you're going to rebel against the word of God. And that's that's the foundation I have. I'm not a Baptist. I've been in many different churches. I went that route because I, I asked God to teach me stuff because I was very confused about Christianity even when I got saved, you know, because they were all different. I went to Coptic churches, Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Episcopalian, Anglican, United Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheranism, or whatever. And I've been battling demons now for a long time. And it's not the best job in the world. People talk bad about you. They, the demons in the people don't like you. So you, you got all these factions going on. And then we come to the simplicity of this chapter. Talks about two important things, communion and women covering their head. And when I first read this first time in, the light bulb went off in Charlie's head. 
And it went off because he said, and I have a problem today with all these modern churches. I have a problem with the Gaithers. I've expressed that to Pastor Thier. Pastor Thier uh, has a problem with me in some areas, but he'll get over it just like I get over the problems I have with him. We're all different. But I believe in Jesus Christ. I get up every day to serve Jesus Christ. And as some of you have seen in the beginning, I, a, I got a phone call that someone would like to get some prayer. And it's hard for me to say no to anybody. I didn't call anybody when I had the attack yesterday. I went to the king, my best friend. And that's what everybody's got to learn how to do. You know, self-deliverance is self-deliverance. If you're praying and fasting, I, I, I'm going to say it again. I'm not boasting on Charlie. I'm boasting on what God did to me when I started out as a Christian. I read this book and I started believing what the word of God says. Nothing will be impossible. This go without prayer and fasting. And sometimes we just got to zip lip and get about what God says to do. So here, every man praying or prophesying having his head covered. Well, when we worship God, that's prayer. When we're praising God in the sanctuary, we come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. I'll never forget years back at one of the conferences, we had a guy sitting there, I'm not going to name it, but the hat was on in the sanctuary. A sanctuary is supposed to be a place where you're, you're coming to seek Jesus, not dates, not husbands, not wives. You're coming to sit down and have a little relationship with the spirit of the living God. You're supposed to come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. You don't think I get upset with Christians that they're, they're always late for church, they're late for worship? I'd rather start my church in the morning early because I'm up. I get up before the sun comes up. But there's a lot of people who can't do that. So you got to you got to meet all all battle stations all the time. So I turn around and I what really irks me with modern Christianity and a lot of these groups. You sit there, they're worshiping God. The words are good, but they got hats on some of the men, and that goes with the Gaithers. And this is all modern Christianity. They're so far in left field when it comes to really obeying the Word of God. And I have to preach it as I see it. You know, when, when Jesus went into the temple, he wasn't a bully. He wasn't being mean. They were just doing things in his father's house that were not appropriate. And he drove them out of the house. You know, I, I'm pretty, pretty tough when it comes to my thoughts, but I, I, I always give grace to people. If they come in with shorts on or short shorts, I warn them, please don't come to church like that. We're dealing with demons, people. Satan's the God of this world. And through everything we pray against, I have learned that there's temptation in, in sports, in music, and everything else. And, and when you're really in the battle with demons and you got them on the rugs and everything else, you find out they do some horrible things to us, period. So a simplicity of teaching in this book, every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonor her head. So she dishonors her husband. And if she's not married, the pastor and further up on the ladder, you're dishonoring God. And, and the simplest thing God gave me, and you know, you might think I'm crazy, but I'm not. If hair was a covering, and we studied this in the Greek years ago, and when I end it on the head covering, I'll get through that. The, the thing here is, God showed me when, when I read this in, it said, if her head's uncovered, dis she dishonors her head, for that is even all one as if she was sh shaven. Now, in good commentaries, they bring out the truth. In other commentaries, there's 
there's error going on and they're they're blaming it all on the Corinths and and the uh the harlotry and everything back in that day you really got to study into all this to understand it well we did have a sister that questioned me many years ago and she prayed she covered her head and she did her re sourcing and came back to me and it's because she did her diligent work that that head covering testimony is on the ministry of salvation house of prayer fellowship anyone can download it read it you can share it with people but every woman for if a woman be not covered let her also be shorn in other words you're to be treated like a prostitute okay What's the big deal? You're not going to church. You're going to church for Christ. If the word became flesh, wouldn't you just want to, for that couple of hours, whether it's two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours? I mean, how important is God really? How, how important are your prayers that need to be answered? The Bible says he rewards those that diligently seek him. I don't care who knows me. I'm blessed. I tell everybody I'm blessed. I, I, I sent a guy a text at a quarter to six this morning, and I, I prayed for him in the text, and I said, I hope you receive what I'm telling you, because we got to deal with this. And, he, and, and I said, thank you. I was very kind and considerate. And he responded, and he said, you have a blessed day too, brother. Because sometimes you've got to address things with people. And I have to address this every time I'm in this chapter. This was probably one of the hardest things for me to do when Jan called me up and said, uh, we're going to read. And, 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 and there's no mistake here. It just shows me some people aren't at the level that God's got me at right now. I laid down my life for Christ already. My whole life is about Jesus Christ every day, morning, noon, and night. I, I love talking about the Lord and how he can bless us and we can bless him. But the woman, it's a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven. Paul says, let her be covered. Let's stop there a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there because if a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as sees the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Remember, she was taken from the rip and she was made the helpmate. That's why she can't have the authority that God has given the man. There's a, a biblical order here that God ordained, not human beings. You know, and I'm going to read out of my other sister's research. Hello, friends. I've been prayfully studying 1 Corinthians chapter 11 since all the debate about head coverings. The debate. Well, because of the angels, who do you think is going to debate head covering? It's Lucifer. It's his kingdom. Women, when they understand it, especially in deliverance, I was in a long phone call with Peter Hobson and his wife, Burley, back in the early 90s, I got the transcript of the, before he even wrote the book, he said, Charles, I'm going to write a book that women should cover their heads because he learned it in deliverance. And it was funny because I'm talking to this brother in Australia and I'm telling him, well, that's kind of like what God has shown me. And then there's a pastor in Indiana, who started out in Chicago, and he wrote in his first book, A Special Word to the Women. Kind of odd that it's not being preached enough sometimes. But when Peter said to me, him and his wife went to an Anglican uh, gathering in England, she was one woman out of 2,000 people that had a head covering on. That's how far left the body of Christ is with the head covering, you know? And why was somebody like me, Charlie Costello, a sinner? God, when, I, when he was bringing me in the word, he showed me that it was kind of funny that the simplicity of the word of God can't even be taken in a person's heart. And I really, really got into this. And that's what 
made me understand. And here's the simple way I always say it to brothers and sisters. Okay. I got hair on my head right now. If it was the same Greek meaning for both the men and the woman, then men can't cover their heads before God. That means men need to walk around bald. And then when, if women, if their hair was their covering, why are they cutting their hair? couple of little, you know, kind of thought patterns that went on in my head because I'd been around for 32 years when I started reading my Bible finally. It took me that long for God to wake me up. But I'm dogmatic about it. I pulmigate this teaching. And if people don't want to hear it, that's okay. Because someday you're going to face God. And a lot of the problems in people's lives, all of us, is because we are not, we are compromising God's word. And all the sisters that have learned through our little ministry, they all cover their heads when they pray now, except the ones I don't see. But most of them that have gotten a great deal of deliverance know the truth about the teaching. And that the simplicity is the hair. If hair was a woman's covering, then hair's got to be a man's covering. They got to be the same words. Look it up. Because they're not the same words. And it took a sister who was questioning me, and I'm going to continue now. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we're talking the whole Godhead here. And then we all have the Holy Spirit, so you really got to diligently go to God in prayer about this. Don't follow other people. Don't follow modern Christianity anymore. I preach against women pastors. I preach I'm pro head covering. I, I can't imagine a Christian voting Democratic anymore. Your body belongs to the Lord. Do you ask the Lord, sisters? And I'll say it to anybody on TV, women, you wouldn't be talking, it, your body's yours if your mother and father would have aborted you. Our bodies belong to the Lord. So for a Christian woman to vote for abortion and want to take care of her own body, she's not, she's not serving God. There's a lot here, people. And we got a silent body of Christ because there's a lot of feminism. And now you got LGBT. I wasn't at the men's conference, but that young man was manifesting LGBT. And one of my brothers got popped in the face, scratched up because he needs to get closer to God. See, when you get close to God, you don't fear nothing and you don't put yourself to taking pot shots by the devil. But you know why? People don't preach the truth in God's word anymore. They get on pulpits, there's money involved in churches, and they preach what's going to bring the people in. And guess who gets rich? All of them. Anyone in a big ministry should be, most of the money should be going to the poor Christians in the world. But it really isn't. It's going to luxury living and everything else in this world today. And you just, you, you want to support big ministries, go support orphanages, orphanages and small ministries that are overseas helping feed children and Christians that are struggling because their economies are struggling. I think it's pretty good what's going on right now that the, most of the world right now is trying to help that little country, Ukraine, and it's crazy. And you know what? The latest thing is that man, that demonized man, he's loaded with cancer maybe. Maybe God's going to step up to the plate and end the baloney right now before nuclear weapons go off. Because once they go off, we're not going to be able to meet on the internet. That's how serious the battle is getting. And Christians are still, I love the world. I got to be in the world. I got to go on vacation. I got to do this. Wow. I thought I was going to get electrocuted yesterday, and I, I didn't have time to call someone on the phone and say, I need prayer. I went to my Lord and Savior and said, you got to get me on a chair. Lord Jesus, help me. 
That's faith. But where's your faith if you can't believe what's spoken in Scripture? I'm tired of Christians fighting with other Christians, and they think they're doing God something good. He says, don't even bring an offering to my church if you got off with someone. The simplicity of that Scripture, I'm on fire right now with this, because most Christians got and need deliverance. I'm sick of hearing people are leaving churches. That shouldn't be it. The churches should be growing. You know what causes people to faction? Satan. And you open the door when you start rebelling against the word of God. Because God's holy. And we're, we're to hate sin. And if you're, you're sinning against the word of God, do something about it. Full salvation means get deliverance. It's the children's bread. Don't be ashamed that you, you opened the door to something you didn't realize you were doing. He says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, for their ignorance. Why? Because, oh, ye of little faith. I get stronger every day because I know God's the only one that can help me. And the only way I can help anybody is to preach it the way I see it. And I, I've had too many examples, women pastors coming and, and Jan has seen it. Anyone, anyone that's spiritual, you get into this book, your life begins to change. So this sister did her homework. Listen to what she wrote. She said, for the husband's the head of the wife, even as Christ the head of the church. And he is what? The savior of the body. Well, Jesus said he knew us when we were in the womb. You don't think he knows babies in the womb? I've seen so many sisters over the years of me being in leadership that got so convicted. They went out and adopted kids because of all the abortions they had. When I sent that thing out the other day to people when the, the Supreme, yeah, of course it's being leaked because the Democratic Party, you go back and watch what Biden said in 2006. He was against abortion and now he's for it. Something wrong with the whole picture out here, people. There's something wrong with Christians that don't want to openly talk about who they voted for and put into the politics because the politics are leavened just like the church is leavened out here today. So the sister wrote me, therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, let so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And she didn't dream this up. It came out of scripture, people. So if you want to argue with this, go argue with God, you know, so much. In the previous scriptures, Paul is showing us God's order. In order for married women to be in submission to the Lord, they must be in submission to their husbands. That's why I let Jan read. Because she had to go, I preached that to her. I didn't preach my thoughts. I preached the word of God, people. I got husbands that want to divorce their wives and get remarried to a, a new Christian woman. They were believers to begin with. The word of God says you can't do that. God's not in it. I could blow everybody up right now with the way God's showing me things in my heart. But you know what God's also said? You, you got to pray for them, Charlie, and you got to be discreet. You have to know when to say things. My biggest problem is I say things without going to God before I speak it. That's what taking thoughts captive for all about people anyway the lord they must be in submission to their husbands so all of us that are married wives be in submission it's not your problem i've been telling the sisters this for years if your husband's not walking shame on him let him fall a few times maybe god needs to let him fall for the husband or that person to start getting it right with God. Go back to Genesis 24, 64. Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off, gently got off the camel. Go back and read the Old Testament. You know, 
James was doing that last night, back and forth, back and forth. For she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. Now, I didn't invent this. This is in the word of God. Jesus said, if you'd search the scriptures, you would know who I am. Well, modern Christianity is about money, and, and they're living high on the hog, all these preachers. I don't care what any of you think. Most of you can't get a one-on-one -on -one with any big-time pastor because they're too busy running their kingdom. They're not running God's kingdom. They don't even know their sheep. Take the natural always in things and understand Jesus taught in parables. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. In other words, and I, I, I have to tell men all the time, take your baseball hat off when they come in the sanctuary. There has to be a reverence for the presence of God. Whenever two or more gather, God is there. I, I want to throw up when I watch these great bands and all these people even in some of the music, I took down people in song. I, I refuse to play their music because they're up there on stage with hats on the men. Guy Penrod, some of the people in his band. There's no separation of holiness. There's no, there's compromise everywhere with the word of God today. And I give it, I give it to Pastor Mike because we were watching Worley the other day and the brothers looked at me and I said, we, I can't wait till Gerald gets the words up on the, the song sermons. Because what we saw at Hegwish and what still goes on at Hegwish will go on everywhere when people get the worship right before the Lord. Pastor Worley, they were, they were manifesting while he was singing. Well, let me share this. When you're really tuning in to God and you're doing God's work, the presence of God will bring forth healing, deliverance, everything. Because you can't put God in a box. Always remember that. It's not a signs and wonders show. It's the people's getting set free. Like Bill Banks, he was used by God to get a lot of good deliverance books into the body of Christ. He was dying in a hospital, fourth stage cancer, and got up and walked out. That's a real miracle. Not someone having the sniffles and someone, those are the miracles that defy nature, people. And sometimes, sometimes people don't want to live. And God's provided doctors, medicine, heart transplants, lung transplants, all kinds of neat things are going on today that God allows for those. And if you want to serve God, God hears the fervent prayer of the righteous. And those are people that pray every day. I pray every day. I worship every day. So when I cry out to God, I'm happy because I'm blessed. You know, Pastor Mobley closed in, in part of 51 last night. He expressed it at the end. You guys didn't hear me close because the only people that heard me close at Edwish because I ran past my little time limit. That's just the way it is. You're subject to the people you go to here. Pastor Mike preached yesterday. He went past his time recommendations. I didn't stop it. It's called you quench the Holy Spirit. Wesley preached for two hours in the fields. When you got the people listening and paying attention, you know you got their ear. God can minister to his sheep people. Let's go on here with this head covering because we still got to get to communion. But every woman that prophesied or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is even all one as if she was shaven. And the modern commentaries, I know, I've read them all, I've got them all. 
they're here in my office. None of those birds do deliverance. The ones that are in deliverance around the world have learned about the head cover. And they're the ones that you need to go get prayer with. The word faith people name it and claim it. I've seen too many of them claim the healing and six months and a year later, the person's dead. And I'm not lying because there were some of them that got up and said that if you take the mark of the beast, and that includes a mega man. I saw it on his, his lineup. You take this shot, the vaccine, you're, you're going to hell. You're committing sin. It was all over the internet, people. You want to seek the truth. You need to get about the father's business seven days a week. You're alive to, to preach the gospel. You're alive to make people disciples. I don't believe Paul is talking about hair as the covering because according, and this is not me, this is the sister writing this back to me as a testimony. She prayed, she seeked, and she understood it. And even to this day, her and her husband are a great little prayer team. I've known them a long time. They've been out there with me at Strike the Head of the Serpent. Her husband's been on his face in the church with me, praying all day. And her husband needed deliverance. Everybody, I needed deliverance, you know? And then when you make a mistake and you open the door, you need deliverance because I still am getting deliverance. I'm going to get deliverance on Friday. I'm going to pray for Adam. He's going to pray for me. I have sisters that pray for me all the time. And they cover their heads because they learn the truth. Here, I don't believe Paul is talking about hair as the covering because according to these verses, Every man would have to be bald. She learned that from Pastor Charlie years ago. She's not part of this fellowship anymore. But see, once you know the truth, the truth sets you free. You begin to walk with the king. Because he says a man who covers his head during prayer is dishonoring Christ. As Mike would say, woo. We said that the, uh, the other day. The woman who prays uncovered not only dis dishonors her husband, but also Christ. Then he is saying it's the same as shaving your head, which in the next verse, he says it's a shame for a woman to shave her head. There's no double standard in God's word. God makes it clear that a even uh, Charlie Costello, when I first read this, I got it right off the bat with the hair. And then it got proven to me years down the, the road. For the woman, it says, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shaven, shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn, let her be covered. He is comparing not wearing a veil to a woman that had to have her head shaved. Again, it means it's shame for a woman not to wear a veil while praying or prophesying. Now I want to skip ahead a bit. And, you know, I have a really good booklet I put together years back. I gave it away at Hegwis because I got him at the church when I was out there. Bud came up to me and he says, I need one of them booklets you got on head covering. And I just so happened to bring one with me because I wanted to teach it off the pulpit. So I gave it away. And, and I, I would read out of that because I'm more in depth in that than I am on this laminate that we hand out. But he's comparing not wearing a veil to a woman that's got a shaved head. Again, it means it's a shame for a woman not to wear a veil when praying or prophesying. And forget the prophesying. It's so out of control. Every, every place you go, there's a, a, a woman prophet, a man prophet. And it's okay if they, they lie. Because all the biggest prophets prophesied Trump and they were wrong. They lied. And some of them at least were humble enough to get up and say, forgive me. 
they would have been Old Testament, they would have all been stoned, men and women. You got to really understand the word of God. Judging yourselves, is it commonly for a woman to pray unto God uncovered? Well, no. Does not even nature itself tell you if a man has long hair, it's a shame unto him? Here, I got corrected by Pastor Mike for Guy Penrod's music. I understand. I had a woman come up to me at church when I put Guy Penrod on the screen at one of the conferences, and she said, Pastor, he's got long hair. No, he don't got hair down to his waist. He's got it to his shoulders. I wasn't there when Jesus was walking around. I wasn't the barber in the first century church. It's just a little common sense here. You know, we're in the New Testament. We're saved by grace. I get that. But there is teaching in the word of God that some people don't get. That's very clean and very clear. So as I'm continuing to expound, because this is one of my favorite things to talk about, because it's very important for the sisters to get it right so that they get answered prayer. And if sisters are being tormented, cover your head and pray every day. God delivers people that pray. If you do it God's way, even the sisters today, I tell them, check it out, prove God. Just like if you don't think giving the first fruits is God, you be stingy with your money. You don't do good things with your money. God's not going to bless you people. I had to learn the hard way to trust God. And when I started trusting God, my whole life became a blessing. So if a woman has long hair, it's glory for her. For her hair is given her for covering. That distinguishes. Did you ever go up to a guy in the street you thought it was you? A, a, a girl and it was a guy because their hair was down to their bottoms. You know, that's basically what Paul is trying to express here and us because he knew the word of God. God knew better than Paul because here we are. We're in that rebellious generation, people. Any way you cut the cake. People call me, oh, you're my brother. I, I don't even hear from them, see them. They don't, they, they're not my brother. They, they're just someone I met that came to a church that wanted to learn a little bit about deliverance. They got a taste of it. And, and you know what? They're out there on rabbit trails, all of them, because once you taste the goodness of God's grace, your eyes are in the book. You're in fellowship. We got a great prayer group. Yesterday, there was 24 people in here, 25 maybe. And, and you know what? I don't count people. I get, I got, I, I'm jealous. Pastor Mike got eight hits overnight on what I put up. But I thank God for technology because more and more people are hurting out there in Christendom and they're trying to find out where is God? He's not at our church. There's no healing. There's no deliverance. First, you got to be still and sit at his feet for a year or two and put the word into action in your life. And then you'll see his glory. That's why I don't worry. If God's taking me home, I'm always ready to go. But he's not done with me because he's still the potter. I'm the clay. He's working on me. I don't want to serve God unless people are getting help. That's how far I've walked. I, I knew about the head covering 36 years ago. And the church is still rebelling about submitting to the word of God, people. It's amazing. You know, at the conference last week or a week before, like I told you, it was really amazing to see Nate remind his little girls to put their head covering in before they went to the sanctuary to put it on. What's wrong with Christianity today? Oh, we got great pastors. Well, let me tell you something. My daughter's 50 years old. She thinks she's got a great pastor. I need a Kodak moment with that man because they don't do deliverance. There's no healing going on. They got hundreds of people. My other daughter, 800 people. There ain't no deliverance going on in that camp. They don't preach against alcohol. It's okay to drink wine. Where, where did we get to the communion here? Paul was admonishing them. 
that you guys are getting drunk. You're, you're turning it into a feast. And it's only to remind you that God shed his blood. And, and I, I'm, I'm on that team. Nobody, I used to drink wine. God convicted my wife and me years ago, and we stopped. And we don't miss it. In fact, I used to buy good wine. So I have more money in my pocket at the end of every week so that I can bless other people. Here, if a woman has long hair, it's a glory. Let me get through this. He is telling us to judge for ourselves by comparing nature. Because in nature, men should not have long hair. Because they shouldn't look like women. That was the whole purpose of the hair. When you study the Greek, it's not the same word. And that makes you really dig into, man, you know what? Maybe I should start obeying God. Women have long hair usually. She put it in parentheses. And it is giving to them as a covering in nature, but not in prayer. This is a woman that came to MOS 10 years ago. She went to local meetings we were having in New York City. And she witnessed the glory of God when I would make people put the women put head coverings on. And they got tremendous deliverance just by just by coming to a, a deliverance, demonstration of deliverance by God. And there were many different people there. And, and we ended up getting thrown out of those meetings because of the, the profanity and the screaming and everything else that was going on. And all it was was our usual manifestations whenever we're bringing the truth of God's word out. You know, I'm going to play that maybe uh, one of these nights up here. That song sermon, I have to ask Gerald when they're going to be putting that stuff up, because there's going to be an explosion with real deliverance churches, because people are hungry for the truth. And the Internet is a, a great way to get the truth out there. And we're going to start doing live deliverance and we'll film it. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman is of the man. How many times you got to be told this creation order? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman have what? Power on her head because of the angels. Now, go to God in prayer about that. Now, for, for everything I'm saying, you sisters, most of you that have been to the ministries, most of you understand the head covering because it's something that Satan got out of the church. You heard Dave in the beginning. He explained how, how the church changed in the 60s. See, us older guys, we witnessed head covering leave the church. And, you know, everybody's waiting for a revival. Well, you got to get back to basics. You got to get back to trusting and obeying God. You got I heard Pastor Mobley. You know, he's telling everybody to fast on Wednesday. I don't say that anymore. I, we used to fast on Mondays in this prayer group. And none of the people that did that are even here with us today. But I, that's early church, Wednesday, Friday. You go back in any of the church fathers, that was a, a known church discipline in the body of Christ for the first 300 years. I'm not making it up. It's in all the books. And, and a Christian shouldn't be told to fast. You should be doing it the way Matthew 6 calls it. If you do it in secret, God will bless you. Okay, husbands and wives, you'll know if one of them is in Eaton. I've done some very long fast in my Christian walk, and my wife fed the kids. You know, I, I was doing other things. I didn't make it obvious to even my family. You know, it's not if, it's when you fast. It's the same thing with praying, brothers and sisters. You look at God's word. He says, it could be important during deliverance because the women are showing submission to the Lord, and that gives them more authority in the what? Spirit realm. You know, God allowed me to see this 36 years ago, and I didn't know Win Worley. I never even heard of the guy. 
but I put it into practice as soon as I seen it. And then these crazy voices started talking out of men and women. And I said, holy cow, I thought I was the only person in the world that God was showing this phenomena. It was like a supernatural thing. And I was freaking out. And when you see something for the first time in your life, how can you forget it? How can you go to a church and manifest and not know there's something good going on there if there's a change in your life or in your family? Just like that child that got deliverance a few weeks back and she ended up knocking it down on her test and made the honor roll for the first time. You hear little Charlotte? Charlotte's been getting delivered since she came into this prayer group. And every time she goes to HBC, she's getting more deliverance. And she's got straight A's in college. So nobody's not going to tell me. It's just like I posted something to Deanne when I saw Bella, you know, and I'm not her uncle, but she calls me Uncle Charlie. I'm a spiritual uncle. I'm a spiritual grandfather to my youngest daughter's baby, because I raised that child. You know, it's, it's not about the physical, it's the spiritual that really is important for all of us people. And God's a spirit. And we're need, the, the word of God says, worship him in spirit and truth. And you can't, people can't get past scriptures. Everybody wants to debate scriptures. Why don't you just be a little child in the kingdom of God and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm going to put it into action. I'm going to try. For those that don't give, I don't care. I don't ask anybody for nothing. And we, we've been prospering for years. Hey, I'm better than a lot of people. I didn't have to buy a building. I was given one. And I use it for God's glory. And, and the money goes to evangelism and helping people get to the church. I don't listen to people with their excuses. We got Uber. We got people. Uh, Charles is going out there now in the streets, handing out tracks. And we're, we're thinking about buying a small bus to bring people from New York because New York is Sodom and Gomorrah people. Chicago, Sodom and Gomorrah. There's enough people in, in some of these cities to fill any church if they're doing the real work of God. If everybody was getting delivered, there'd be a multiplication going on of souls. That's why I'm done with this deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. You need to win souls. If you've been delivered, you should be winning souls. If you're not, what's your excuse? You're not speaking Jesus. I speak Jesus every day. And if you don't like what I'm saying, get off the line. It doesn't bother me. Because one puts a thousand. You get the right person. That, that gets saved, that, that wants that love affair with the Lord Jesus Christ, they're the blessing. I've seen it too many times in the years that I've been a preacher. And, and in it here, this sister wrote this and brought it to me at the church. If you wear a veil during prayer, that would make a difference there too. If it doesn't give us more authority, why does the scripture say to have power on her head because of the angels? You got to understand which angels God's talking. Remember, all things were created by him. The angels that rebelled and the angels that are serving. And the ones that are the good angels, they're the ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. Well, maybe you're just being a disobedient kid and your prayers aren't getting answered. We read that every day in the warfare prayer. There's no excuse. Anybody that comes to the church, I give them to them for free. I don't ask them to give me money or anything. Most of the books I give out, we give out for free, including Pastor Worley's, because there's so much important stuff in these books. People need to read them and put it into practice in their own lives. And the greatest example was at this last conference, seeing every one of those young kids getting deliverance. And the older kids were doing deliverance on older people. Boy, that made my heart go pitter-patter. That's why I didn't take out my Bible on when I gave my message. I preached to my heart. If you're in the spirit, then you receive 
when, when someone's preaching and God's given utterance without you reading line for line verbatim, there's got to be a good connection there spiritually. You know, that's why I love that song, I Speak Jesus. And I see my brothers here for the first time in a while. And he works, he works crazy hours. You know, I have many brothers and sisters in the Lord. This does not mean women are important people. And people who teach that this are women haters. I don't see that wearing a veil during prayer is such a bad thing. Because you're not going to church for a, a, an attraction show. And it's the same thing with makeup. And it's the same thing with all the clothing. Everything's in the scripture. People just, everybody wants to be like the world today. And they don't want to be the way God says he wants us to be. And yet, how can you say that song? I, I surrender all. I want to be the way you want me to be. And you're not doing what the word of God says in your own life. It is a beautiful thing to submit to God's authority and to his order. Now, mind you, this was so important. I didn't even bring this up at Hegwish, but I'm bringing it up today because this is one of those chapters that's very important in the word of God. And it's so important that for 35 years almost, my wife has been sitting women down, whether it was the house ministry, the hotel ministry, or even at our ministry, and we make the sisters read this chapter. We, we make them study the word of God, and you'd be surprised. Tim. No surprise to us, but it, it's just like the renunciation prayers when people come in and we get them to sit down, and, and if they're really looking for help and they do the prayers, God's going to meet them where they need to be met. I believe for single women, it still shows submission to the Lord as your head. In other words, if you don't have a husband, well, you got the great I am. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God's the creator. He can take care of his creation, and you're part of it. People yell at me because I, 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 I come down on Democrats about they're voting, and, and I have to. God's not in it if you're killing babies. But if any man seemed to be contentious, we have no such custom, and neither do the churches of God. And, in, and coming down this head covering thing, and this is nothing new. I've always had them at the church. I'm going to have to order a hundred of them because I give them out. Now in this day, that I declare unto you, I praise ye not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Now here, Paul is saying, if anyone wants to argue that there's no such custom in the church, he does not praise them because they are, not, they are making things bad in the church for saying it is wrong and causing division. There must be heresies among you and people accept it. You talk something long enough, you get people believe in. Look, look what happened in our country in the last two days right now. To me, it's answered prayer, regardless of who's protesting. If they give the decision back to God's people, there's going to be a lot of states banning abortion. That needs to be done. This murder that America has been cursed because we call ourselves blessed by God, and yet we're disobeying God by allowing innocent children to be murdered. I don't care if you hang me for saying that. It's the truth. First of all, when you come together in a church, there's always division. And I partly believe it, for there must also be heresies among you, that they are approved, may be manifest among you. I believe that God is in control of everything, and he put every word in the Bible that he wanted us to know. And you know what? As, a, as your brother in Christ, if you've never been around me for any season to see that demons do do not like me, 
It's because I won't back off. I won't preach something to you to make you feel good because that's not what it's about. It's about salvation. It's about the salvation of souls, the deliverance to destroy the, the works of the devil. You know, the letter was written by Paul, but it's the Holy Spirit that inspired it, just like every other book in the Bible. And this sister was really sharp. You know, I was so grateful to her that she wrote this all up and, and you know, she came and, and her marriage really took off. You know, her and her husband are very happily married and, you know, they live for the Lord. He tried a house church that didn't work and they moved again recently, but he stayed tuned into the Lord. He's on Facebook. Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, teaches all of us, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman or a workwoman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I hope that you will all take this to prayer and study for yourselves. See, she's, she's, she's hoping that people would read what she did and went through. I just wanted to share what the Lord had been showing me. Got a loop to uh, uh, katapa kalupto is the Greek word for covering. And the definition is to cover up, to veil. It, first part of the definition in the Greek. And that's what really nailed it for this sister. I told her to go do her homework. And she was so excited. She came back to me. And she said, the Greek word means you got to cover up to veil or cover oneself. And she nailed it when she put the Old Testament scripture of Genesis 24, 64. So if you go back in the book of Genesis and you really study Genesis, God took the rib out of Adam and Adam was to be Lord over his wife. It's right there in scripture. That's why I hold all the men accountable, not the women. It's the man's fault in the marriage. It'll always be the man. The man's going to have to stand before God. He's supposed to be the spiritual head. You know, I, I get into all this stuff, Christian fortune telling, all this stuff that's going on in modern Christianity and the charism, char, I call it charismaniacs, but the charisma magazine featured a full tell report about the, the Christianized version of what's going on with the prophet and the prophetess. So there, there's so much there that you could spend hours in this because even so the man also by the woman in the Thomas Nelson this morning it, 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 on the angel part, it said the reference is to the holy angels or who else are spoken of ministering spirits. The keynote of Paul's thought is submission to the divine order of all, you know, all things. Women should demonstrate the same sense of submission to God in recognizing their true position and fulfilling its claims, as do the angels who know nothing of insubordination among their ranks, because the angels that were insubordinate, guess what? God threw them out, a third in the angels. And that, that's even more of a reason to put a head covering on so that you can't be tormented by the enemy. You know, when you go to God in prayer and you do it God's way, you're going to see your life. There's going to be a presence, sisters, and all the sisters that go into the simplicity of just obeying the word of God. You know, a head uncovered is the covering is symbolic, indicating the authority that exists above the woman but still under Christ. I said that to you. Now let's finish the Lord's Supper. The second part, and it wasn't a big part. You know, I, I, I hit this hard in all directions. You know, so many people, so many Christians, it's all about them. It's got nothing to do with their salvation or the, the simplicity of the word of God saying that the first fruits belong to the Lord. I learned that a long time ago. And all I could say to everybody is I'm blessed. I don't have a fancy home. I've got a nice home. I got running water, a shower, 
I've always got an abundance of food to take care of anybody that comes here, anyone that comes to the house. I tell them, I'm not your, I'm not going to be your servant here. My house is your house. And there's three refrigerators. And if you see something you need or want, just go ahead and go for it. That's the way I live. But the, the Lord's Supper, you know, was addressed here. These are two important things. God put them all in the same chapter. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. We all know it. God said, you know, and then he knew someone was going to betray him. Sometimes, sometimes people we love today, instead of coming to us, and I'm guilty too. We all do it because of the old sin nature. And, and that's why you got to learn to control the tongue because the tongue is a lot of fire that goes out there. And in the word today, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, and you know, the church has been doing this for 2000 years, still doing it. You know, Protestant churches usually do communion once a month. Deliverance churches, we used to do it years ago over the years when I got the building. We did it just about every week for one reason. It's a transit group. It's not a, a regular congregation. It's transit because when we do deliverance, we do it openly in the church. It's not a private affair. Just like here in Zoom, when we do deliverance in Zoom, People want deliverance. We go in the Zoom room. Yesterday, when Mike, at the end of that preaching, Teresa got some more deliverance. That was God's appointment. It wasn't mine. We just jumped in and prayed for her when she was manifesting. And you see, Pastor Mike was praying. And what, what do you think Wynn Worley did? He kept singing and the demons were coming out of people. But if you looked around the, the, the place and the it wasn't a mass deliverance. It was a song sermon. That's how much they hated Worley. You don't see that in churches. You really don't. Not on that level. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread, drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And here's that thing. And, and it's throughout scripture, a man, a woman, because you're part of man. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. It's not, it's not a ritual. It's just like giving people. When you, when you dissect the uh, uh, Proverbs, uh, Deuteronomy, you get into Malachi, then you get into the New Testament, and we're saved by grace. But the New Testament says, in what measure you measure, it shall be measured to you. So Corinthians, we're going to get to that too. You got to be a cheerful giver. God doesn't want Ananias and, and Sapphira, they, they lied. And they dropped dead. You know, well, it's, it's the same thing with communion. You know, God gives every one of us no excuse. We all have 1 John 1, 9. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings conviction on you. If you're reading your Bible, trust me, you're going to get convicted because you're not walking on water. None of us are. He that eateth and drinketh for this cause. Now listen to this. Just because you're rebelling against God's word, you are weak and sickly among you and many sleep means many die. You know, if you're not, I don't know how to put this, but if you're not about the master's business and you say you're born again and you're saved and you're not in the word of God every day, well, who are you really serving? I would do the spiritual checklist and make sure I'm doing what God wants Charlie to do. I get up every day. I, even when I take phone calls, I say, God bless you to people I don't know. God's got to be in your vocabulary. Living water has to flow from your tongue, your mouth. You got to be a light in darkness. You get up every day and put it into practice and your life is going to change. You sing that song, you get convicted if you're not trusting and obeying God's word. 
And sometimes Christians need to hear this instead of woe is me. I get tired of the woes and the me's because I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a God. I got a father that knows my name because I talk to him every day. When I'm alone, I talk to him. I petition the Lord when I'm waking up for other people. That's what a prayer life is all about. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They're not putting their faith in you. I told you guys yesterday, I had a blood sister that told me she don't agree with me. And what do I do with it? I kick the dust off my feet and I break that relationship. And all I can do is pray for her. Because just by what she's speaking, she's not going up. She's going down. And I got to ask people to pray for my younger sister. And she's sick as sick can be right now. You know, it might take that last moment like uh, Cecilia did with her brother or Pastor Michael with his sister. Because God's in control, not us. God looks at everybody's hearts. And, and, you know, when you're sincere about your prayer life and following, God knows. He knows his sheep. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. Just do it. Do the things that God says to do. And your life will come out of all the turbulence you're in when you really make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. There's no excuse. You know, they don't even follow if a man don't work, he don't eat. Today, you can be on social security, you can be on welfare, you can be on just damage control. All the major towns, they got so much money coming in. They got all, everybody's got a food program. I stood in line and I watched a woman with these coupons buying for like eight families. And I said to myself, boy, God, you got everybody covered, even the ones that don't know you. What does the word say here in closing? It says, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. I preach that all the time. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if anyone hunger, let him eat at home. And, and the reason being, the, old, the early church went wild with this because they didn't have pasteurization. So the only wine they had was fermenting. And, you know, once you get into second or third glass, you get into that stage called drunkenness. And it's sin to be a drunkard. I don't care what anybody says. You know, it, temperance is very important. Romans 12, 1 and 2 is super important. You know, I struggled yesterday because I took medication that I shouldn't have took because I didn't need to, I wasn't eating. And, 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 and the reality is a young brother witnessed to me and comforted me. And he said, how much water did you drink today, pastor? And I said, you know what? I've been so busy with everything else. I didn't drink any water. I drank a little bit of vitamin water in the morning and that was it. And I take enough heart medicine and stuff to choke a horse. And they've, I'm down, guys. They, I'm at the point where I'm switching over now. We're going to cut out one of the, big, the biggest medication I was on for the last four and a half years. It's going to be bye-bye in another week. And that's when the real uh, tri trials of my faith are going to explode because God's taken two just about two diseases out of my body already in four and a half years. Now I need the miracle, you know? He needs, my, my heart needs to shrivel up and die a little smaller so that I can fulfill my heart's desire. And that's to just preach. I, don't, I, I just like doing what I do every day, people. I don't get tired of reading the word of God or telling people they need to repent. We're gonna go into the gifts of the spirit tomorrow. And wow, and the body of Christ. But as we close this, you know, Jan did a beautiful read, her and Debbie, this morning. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. 
that you come not together unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order when I come. And that's why it's so important for all of us to cut the epistles, you know, to glean from every epistle that Paul writes. And we've been doing this. We just went through the book of Acts. We went through Romans. And I'm excited. I'm excited because a lot of you, I'm, I'm not so much excited that we have a daily good group. I'm more excited that people are going up to the website now and they're starting to hit on more on the saints and everything else. And we're, we're getting a lot of testimonies from people that are really, really starting to walk a lot better spiritually because of what we do in this prayer group. And, and you know, last night was, I got four messages up because I fell behind a little. I reached out for Gerald. I couldn't get him. So I said, you know what, God, you give me strength. I'll get through the night. And then here, Jan, she's checking up on me because Sharon's not around, making sure I'm okay. And, you know, in eating, in the early church, I'm going to pull this from the commentary because it's important for your wisdom and knowledge here, everything we covered today. And all this is being recorded. So it wasn't a bad thing that the sisters read everything today because I did all the expounding. And it's all recorded, the expounding. In the early church, the Lord's Supper was commonly preceded by a fellowship meal. And that's something that everybody's been hawking me on about. And the reason why I stopped doing that at our church, it's, it made a lot of work for my wife and me. You know, we're, we're not young. We're getting older. We're, we're, I'll be 70. She'll be 69 in a year. And Later known as the Agape or Love Feast, that's why I kind of like when John Gogan, when I met him 28 years back, he called his fellowship Agape Bible, you know, loving the Bible and the Word of God. Eventually, so many problems accompanied these feats. So at the Council of Carthage, now this is why good study Bibles are good people. Because here we are, we're in the year 2200. But they made a decision, a group of believers back in 397 AD. So when you really start getting into studying the writings of the early church, that's why Calvinism recently, I went and bought the book on Augustine, because uh, John Calvin studied Augustine's writings. And that's where you get the 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 doctrine and the tradition of men mingled into denominations. You know, you think if, if John Wesley was alive today and what they're doing in the United Methodist Church, that he wouldn't be flipping over in the grave? But we know he's not in the grave. Do you, what do you think Pastor Worley's doing in heaven? Praying. He's still praying for everybody. You know, these are people that gave up their lives for teaching things God was teaching them. And they wanted everybody to know about. Martin Luther, a monk, came out of Catholicism. When he translated the Bible, and he, it wasn't by the tradition of Catholicism at that point. He saw that man was saved by grace and grace alone in the translation. He freaked out. He protested against the, the Catholic Church. A lot of descendantry is from, and James hit that last night when he was teaching. That we don't know what our generations, four and five and 10 and 20 behind us, were all about. That's why we need the Word of God. And if we think something is ought in our lives, Pastor Worley said, go after it. Submit for prayer. That's how Matt got deliverance last Saturday night. Charles is praying with people from Chicago. They're calling Charles in the Bronx to get deliverance. What's up with all this, people? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a, a... I don't care about all these ministries. There ain't enough of them. You... you Everybody here that believes in deliverance should have 
a fellowship going on with other brothers and sisters, period. Because you're supposed to be an ambassador for the kingdom of God now, period. You know, when the, the Roman Catholics took this as my body is literally the, the Eucharist. You know what God did to me when I was younger? And I, right before I left the Catholic church, because I was the only church I knew because I grew up in it other than the Lutheran pastor teaching me some truth about grace when I was a teenager. But I always thought my family was telling me the truth. You heard Pastor Mike yesterday. And if you didn't hear him, just go tune into yesterday's It's Up. I don't care as long as we get the messages out. People know that they're up there now and they can listen to what we're talking about. It's called fellowship, people. You might glean something from any one of the speakers. You know, I, I love Brother Adam. He's been through two religious groups already and now he's on the right path with the word of God. It's not literal but fugitive. His actual body was there in the midst, participating with the disciples in eating the element of the bread, which signifies his incarnation. I mean, I, they made a religion out of communion in the Catholic Church, and people buy it instead of faith in Christ. Remember, they didn't have Bibles the first 300 years, people, word of mouth. When Cornelius and his family got saved, they believed the testimony of the apostles. I have a real hard time with people calling themselves apostles today, because the real apostles were in his presence. Even Paul, he, he struck Paul blind and said, Saul, Saul, why you persecute me? It's right there in the Bible. It's not like we, he had to wait. There's been plenty of visions and Plenty of things, and you got to rightly divide all that stuff. Every church has got their own thing going on today, every kingdom. But Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, who by his own blood entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. How many times have we got to preach that in this prayer group? Hebrews 9, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's not because I'm intelligent. It's because I read my Bible. I study my commentary Bible. And I weigh all things out. I search scripture all the time. You know, that's what James does. It's like Mike said this morning when he came in. And I, I have an unction why Mike Fear left the prayer group today. And that's okay. I do things the way I do them. Mike does the way he thinks. Everybody's different. Damnation, you know. Notice the emphasis was on the blood. That was in Hebrews. This signifies our Lord's death, which in turn signifies the ground on which we all have eternal salvation applied to the heart of the believing sinner. That's why I always say that. Do you really surrender all to the word of God? If you sing that song, and you're not surrendering to God's word, you're a hypocrite, just like the Pharisees were. You can't have both kingdoms. You're either following the God of this world or you're following the true God. When you're saved, you're saved. God's big enough that he don't, he don't let go. If you, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, you're not going anywhere. It's the grace of God. It's a gift. And you'll know people by their fruit. I always tell people, maybe they weren't really saved. I've seen plenty of young people come to me that were worried about losing their salvation. And when we got them into scripture and showed them all the different scriptures, that it's a gift from God, their faces lit up. You know? All you got to do is go back and read Psalm 51. And, and in the flip side, David was a man after God's own heart. I want to go to the damnation is best rendered judgment. 
Okay, the kinds of judgment the apostle had in mind are enumerated in the following verses. And it gives you a whole bunch of verses. I'm going to skip that because the other Greek word, the verb komeomai, sleep, when is was referring to death, usually refers to the death of a believer. You know, and we know to to die is to gain. To be absent from the body is present in the Lord because the, the flesh is corrupt. There's no good thing that lives in it. And God's going to give us a new body. And, you know, I didn't invent it. I read the word of God and I believe the word of God. I'm not worried. I don't worry anymore about anything. I go to God in prayer about everything. You know, if it's God's will and you line up with God's will, it'll be done unto you. If you're being disobedient, you can pray into your blue and you're going to get a lot of unanswered prayer. The Lord's Supper was a distinctive symbol of Christian worship instituted by the Lord on the eve of his death, being a spiritual partaking of bread. And, uh, and, and this is what, kudos to Pastor Mike, because it's in the Thomas Nelson, the fruits of the vine. That means grape juice, fresh, not, not fermented, but fresh grape juice, because God's holy. God's blood is holy. Look what happened to Brother Robert. He went home to be with the Lord at the beginning of the week. His blood poisoned him because he chose to go that route. He was tired of living in this corrupt world. And he, he loved the Lord the last 10 years of his life. And he, he's done it. 65, he says, I just, if you don't give me a miracle, I'm going home. And I, I tend to agree with that, you know, because we all get to die the first death. The elements are presented as a thankful expression of Christ's sacrifice. That's what the supper is a reminder of what Jesus Christ did. He took his sins upon our sins upon him. We were taken in fellowship with him and with one another. It's a memorial conducted to remember what Christ's atoning death did for each and every one of us. Christians are divided here, even from the beginning. Christians are divided as to whether the table should be opened or closed. I mean, God judged some Corinthian Christians with sickness and death for their foul failure to properly, 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 I'm, I'm sounding like Mike was last night, observe this ordinance. Every Christian should use the Lord's Supper to examine his spiritual progress and attitudes before partaking so that's a a good little role and i my finishing role i probably don't know where it is because i knew i was getting pumped and it's right here i'll finish with the little commentary you know i'm a creature of habit some matters discussed in this chapter may have only local significance, but the spiritual principles apply to us today. When it comes to sharing in public worship, we must ask ourselves these serious questions. And you know, the reason I say it is because in, the, in, in Matthew, it tells that doctrines of demons and all that stuff is going to come in the latter times. And, you know, you don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand we're living in a very troubled time right now spiritually speaking we must be careful not to dishonor the lord no matter what the culture standards may be and we got that battle going on right now in society as soon as the that the supreme court made that decision to rebuke the the row weight thing which should have never been put up as law now you got all the people that are constantly i want my mapo now and they want it their way and god's not in their way people so this is a major friction that's going on that god's allowing to happen right now sort of like giving everybody a chance to repent no matter what the cultural standards may be god has established a headship in creation and i said that in the beginning when i took over this is God's creative order. If you want to go against it, that's your business. But I'd be careful 
because rebellion to God's word is the sin of witchcraft. And you're going to open the door to a lot of other things in your life. And in the church, and we must respect it. We are one in Christ in love, must honor one another by the way they ate at their love feast. The rich embarrassment, the poor, and brought shame to the church. And that's why they changed things. What year? I said 397. So to discern the body, when we meet to celebrate communion, see, they didn't even talk much because they didn't have anything like we have today. We had Peter Hobson. Because you go back past this generation that we're in right now, there really wasn't a lot put on deliverance. In the beginning of the church, there was a lot emphasized in the writings that believers were casting out devils. But after the Dark Ages, there's very little written about it. And then Wesley saw it as some kind of supernatural thing that was going on, but he quite didn't understand it. But he wrote about it. And then only in the the uh, uh, the Welsh revival did that sister with Evan Roberts pen a book called War on the Saints. And, you know, for all you guys that were up there with us when we, we studied War on the Saints and we played Win Worley's video and look at what Mike played. Kind of coincidental, huh? He was busy with joy and he put up a teaching Sunday and it was the passivity of paralysis. You know, it was, it's about how passivity brings you into being paralyzed in God's work. And Pastor Worley, when he did that teaching, he gave number one kudo to the Bible. And the second book in his arsenal went hand in hand, he said, right from the pulpit, was War on the Saints. And there's never been a ministry in this country today like HBC. Yeah, the devil's been trying to stop everybody. But we're seeing a move of the spirit through the, the churches right now that God's going to prevail. The gates of hell are not going to prevail against the body of Christ. And, and, you know, we're asking God to extend time so that more people can come to the salvation of his son. And that's in scripture. We're praying every day for the salvation of souls. It's not about us. It's the only reason I get up and do this every day. It's about him. It's about Jesus. Just like I prayed that, played that song, get us back to the heart of worship. We should be worshiping God in spirit and truth. We should be excited that God saved us, that our names are written in his book. and. Don't worry about demons and people. Pray and fast for them. There's a lot of people that are good people, but they're not going to heaven, people. And that includes all the ones in all the bogus religions we bind and loose against. Because deep down inside, they were made in God's image. And they're seeking God. They just got duped by unclean spirits. And sometimes we get duped by brothers and sisters. You know, I went and bought a book that'll be here in a couple of days. And, and Pastor Mike already read the book. And he said to me, be careful with some of the stuff in that book. And I said, okay, you know, I'm always careful. I go to God in prayer when I'm reading stuff. And if something don't line up with scripture, I just spit it out. Or you like more in the saint says, take a neutral. Don't try to figure God out. Just love God with your whole heart. Do what you understand in God's word. Be about obeying what you can decipher, and God's going to bless you for that. You know, some people just don't have it to fast for days on end. Some people don't have it to get up and pray a couple of times a day. Some people fall on their knees more than other people. There's no, there's many ways you can pray. And how about the heart? God knows your heart, my heart. And all we got to do is let the heart pray. You know, when I woke up early, early this morning, I rolled over. It wasn't even, uh, it was a little after four o'clock this morning. And God just directed me to pray for a few people. And I said, thank you, Lord. 
you know, most time you get up, you're like, oh, what am I up for? But there's always something. I, I, I was looking at stuff and I sent my brother Charles a text at quarter to six. I sent something to Deanne when I first work, woke up. My, my phone don't lie. Your phone don't lie. If you got something on your heart and it's for somebody and you share it with them, there's always going to be a time um, when you, that's why I always like to goof on my brother Ernie that the texting is good if you're using it for God's kingdom. You know, and he, just like the woman I ministered to yesterday in the afternoon, she thanked me for taking the time and, and, you know, I called her a couple of times. I didn't get through. Then I noticed she called me. So I made sure I called her back. How many times do you really do that with people? You know, it's overwhelming sometimes when you get a lot of phone calls. Sometimes you just darn, the devil got you going in so many directions, you forget to do what you said you were going to do. Yeah, I, I'm guilty too. We all go through those moments. Just because we're saved doesn't mean we're, we're, we're going to live a no temptation and a, a completely free life. The enemy's trying to stop us from doing what we're supposed to be doing. And any delay is what the, the enemy's there to do. So I, I hope you guys and whoever's going to listen to this on the internet gets a blessing from some of the stuff I was talking about. I don't even know how long I talked, but it was a long time because them, them sisters got this prayer done good this morning. And I know I was going. It was hard for me to give up this reading today, people, because I'm, I'm more dogmatic about it than any of you. You know, I, I, I am that my wife knows it. There's been many women that got mad at me because I wouldn't pray with them at MOS. I said, nope, I'll pray for you but you're not submitting to the word of God. So therefore you got to learn to submit to God. Rebellion causes unanswered prayer. So why am I going to waste my time? It's just like Pastor Worley said, if you don't want to repent your sin, you're going to keep your sin. That's not my problem. That's your problem. 1 John 1, 9, you, you mean it? God washes you. And, and you get up and walk every day. And every time you fall, you, hey, if you're in love with Jesus, you'll say, I'm sorry, Jesus, help me. And he will. Anyway, God bless you all. Most important thing is Jesus Christ. We all say it. Pastor Mobley said it last night. Mike said it the other day. If you died right now, where would you go? Just make sure that your heart's turned over to God, that you love the Lord. You're you're back to what I played, the heart of worship. It's all about you, Jesus. And Father, help these people that are on the fence. Have the angels drag them over it, Father. Give them an increase of faith today so that Satan's kingdom would decrease and your kingdom would increase. That's why we meet, Father. And I thank you for your grace and mercy. Amen.